How many of you have decided that you want to get a new puppy? You're going to get a mid-pin puppy to be exact, and you've decided that you're going to go talk to the breeder, you've done your research, you find out who you want to buy from, when you want to buy them, and how much you want to buy them for. And then you get to the breeder, the breeder asks you, hey, do you have any questions? Yeah. So you need to make sure that you have plenty of informed questions. So I have gathered a bunch of questions that I have talked to many other breeders to find out the best questions that you should be asking your breeders before you select your men pin puppy. Check it out. Hey, welcome back to Men Pin Nation. My name is Nate. If this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our future videos. So the first question we looked up was, can I see the puppies? So many times we buy things online nowadays and we don't think about actually seeing it live. So the best thing you can do is go visit. That is the number one thing you can do. Now the world we live in right now, or maybe just what's going on and how far away the breeder is, maybe you can't go visit them in person. But with the today's technology, you should definitely, definitely be doing a video chat with them. And right away, if they're not wanting to do a video chat, that's kind of a bad sign that maybe you shouldn't be dealing with that breeder. So once you have them there, your next question is gonna be, can I take a tour? Now some breeders, they work right out of their homes. A lot of them do. Some have maybe slightly large operations and they kind of have a facility. Um, but nonetheless, any breeder should be happy to take you through their home, whether it's once again on video chat or it's in person. And while you're taking the tour, you're looking around, you know, is their house upkept? Does it seem like they run a professional business? Because that's what they are running. Whether they do this just once a year or a couple different times a year, it is a business and do they treat it as such? Have the puppies been socialized? So this is very key. When you're visiting, you need to make sure that they've actually been socialized. So some examples of socialization that good breeders are gonna do is they're going to have them socialized not just with their litter mates, but they're gonna have them socialize when they're old enough before you take them home, maybe take them you know, to the vet. Obviously they should be going to the vet or they're gonna maybe ride with them in the car or if the, maybe the breeder has cats, do they inter uh, interact them with the cats or do they interact them with um, other children maybe they have. The more that the breeder tells you about their interaction, the better that you're gonna have a more well-adjusted dog when they arrive home to you for the first time. Have vaccines been administered? So you should be getting a full health checkup, and you should know what vaccines have actually been administered. Now ask this beforehand, before you take the puppy home, and you can actually cross check that with your local veterinarian. So get a list from, the, from them of the vaccines, and not just a handwritten list, but make sure you basically get a list from their vet showing what vaccines they got at maybe six weeks. And take that into your vet and say, this is the vaccines that I'm dealing with, and these are what I think, um, they should be at and make sure that they all sync up. Another big one is deworming. A lot of breeders will get the vaccines that they need, but a lot won't go through the deworming uh, portion. So ask that up front. Now that's something that's important and I think it should be done, but at least know ahead of time once again so you can work with your vet if they're not dewormed to make sure to get them dewormed right away. Next, have the puppies in the litter been sick? So sometimes Unfortunately, some of the puppies show up and maybe not all of them make it, or one of them has an issue and they've had to been taken aside. Um, so you need to find that out. Now that's not necessarily a deal breaker for me, but once again, you need to know the full picture of what's going on. So what is wrong with that puppy? You know, is, was it a fluke? Is there something that was passed in the bloodline that maybe now your puppy is a carrier? So knowing up front that you have some some of the litter mates that are sick will help you make that decision on whether eh, maybe I should pass and go to somewhere else. So how many veterinary visits have they had? So based on their age that you're getting them, sometimes you may not get the puppy till they're 12, maybe 16 weeks old. What you may run into is that they took them to the initial visit, but did they take them to the follow on visits? So wherever they're at in the life cycle, and once again, come armed with this knowledge from your vet, you should already make sure that they have that done. So if it's 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 20 weeks, whatever it may be, make sure that they are getting the regular visits at the regular scheduled time. So with most things, there should be a guarantee that you buy. And that includes puppies. There's nothing wrong with you asking, what is your guarantee? Any reputable breeder is gonna say, well, my guarantee is if there's an issue with the puppy, then I'm gonna take that dog back if needed. 
So make sure you have that up front and you talk to them ahead of time and you already know that they're willing to take the dog back if something that you were promised is not as it seems. Okay, another big one that most people don't think about, references. Just like a job, just like if you're gonna be, you know, maybe buying a house and finding a real estate agent or whatever it may be, ask for references. Now, once again, they should be more than happy and hopefully have a long list of references that they can give you that you can check out yourself. So definitely don't just let them pass along, you know, a you know testimonial on their website and that suffice. Make sure you get actually name and maybe email addresses or phone numbers or whatever you can get that you can make direct contact with people that have dealt with them in the past and you can get the real ground truth about this breeder. So please do not ever buy a puppy without going through a three, at least three or four references for that puppy that you're gonna buy from that breeder. So a contract. So we talk, kind of talked about a guarantee a little bit earlier and sometimes there's a contract. So what is in the contract? So generally a contract that you may set up with them is that you're going to take these certain actions. Sometimes breeders want you to take uh, the action of you're gonna get them spayed and neutered at a certain time. Now the reason I want you to make sure you ask about the contract is not really is there a contract, but there should be some type of contract and what is in it. And just make sure it aligns with the values that you're gonna do. So like I said, the main one may be, if you plan to breed the dog, some breeders don't want to do that. So they want to make sure that any puppies that they are breeding and giving out are gonna be spayed or neutered. So make sure it aligns with what you wanna do ahead of time before you show up to get the puppy and you look at the contract for the first time. So most will send it over ahead of time, but if they don't, just have them send the contract and all the stipulations that you can read ahead of time and ask questions, just like we're doing right here. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the parents. So when you go visit, not only should you be visiting the facility, visiting their home where they live, you need to visit the parents. Now, sometimes you're not gonna be able to see you know, the dad because obviously the mom's gonna be there with the puppies, but sometimes breeders don't necessarily have both the mom and dad present because it's from another breeder. So make sure that you at least see the mom and you need to just investigate them. I mean, that kind of one, that's how you can look at them and decide that that's probably what my puppy, you know, roughly size are gonna be, their temperament, and just see how they react with their breeder. Cause this is gonna kind of show how their dog is treated and how maybe that's gonna kind of come off on your puppy when you bring them home. So are they acting timid? Are they, you know, are they scurrying away very skittish? Or they should, if they're, if they're multi-breed breeded dog and they have people come by, all the time they kind of should be a little sociable now of course the mother's gonna have puppies so she's gonna be guarded over puppies which is the right thing but at the same time you can tell the difference between I'm guarding my puppies and I'm basically scared for my life so make sure you know the difference and you take that into account and read the room when you go in there now something I messed up real quick when I got my dog blitz you know what 12 12 years ago now is Honestly, I went down, I found a breeder. This is definitely was not a good breeder. And they tried to charge me for papers. Now at the time, I couldn't afford much of anything. So they were only gonna charge me like $25 more. So I didn't get the papers. One, because that's about all I could afford at the time. And I was like, why would I need them? Not knowing you know, what those could tell me. But the biggest concern there is not that it was $25, it's that they charged me at all. They should be registered with the AKC and the breeder should go through and do that and they should you know want to draw their bloodline back to be able to show you you know the dog's history but they shouldn't be charging you a dime for that so for me that's an instant broken deal if they charge you for the paper so they even try to even bring that up so if ask them ahead of time if you want to or just have that in the back of your mind that um, they shouldn't be charging you for any papers like that uh, so feeding so you need to know before you bring the puppy home, what are they feeding? You know, you're gonna have your own brand that you wanna use, or maybe you're gonna use a raw diet, or you're gonna use this kibble or that kibble or whatever else. But the main thing is that you need to know what puppy food that they're using. Now, most breeders will give you usually a small bag to take home with you, and you're gonna have to go through the process of, you know, kind of transferring to the new food that you want them on. But you kind of need to know ahead of time what food they've been giving to them one, make sure it's a good food brand that they have. And two, 
just so that if you potentially have to buy more while you're doing that transition over, you can go ahead and buy that ahead of time before you ever go pick up the puppy and bring them home. Okay, next question um, is about a breeding club. So do they belong to a breeding club? You have the American Kennel Club is obviously the big national thing. Um, and then there's also the miniature pincher of North America here in the US. And then there's just a bunch of local chapters of clubs as well. So if find out if they belong in any of these clubs and find out what their affiliation with them is, how long they've been with them, um, what they kind of do with the club. And this will just once again kind of see their involvement. Okay, so with the puppies, once again, something you need to ask is how old are the puppies? Now this may seem like an obvious answer. And guess what? We're not actually asking, are they, how old are they? maybe 12 weeks it's how old are they and when can they come home now you ask that because what you don't want to hear is that they're going to try to release them to you before eight weeks you don't want to get them any earlier than that so if they're trying to pawn them off on you you know at six weeks definitely you know four weeks or sooner then that probably means that you're running into some type of puppy meal because at the puppy meal what they're going to try to do is they're trying to get the puppies gone and pretty much they're going to try to rebreed that dog all over again so they wanna get them gone, get them out of the house. So you need to make sure that that's not gonna happen. So make sure you're getting, once again, dogs with papers and you're not getting them till a minimum eight weeks. Okay, health test. So we talked about them going to the vet and that is very important, but also you need to make sure that they're getting a full health test. So it is very important that they have their vaccinations and that would probably be number one, but there's a lot of health and genetic tests that can be done that really most reputable breeders are gonna get done because they wanna know before they hand out a puppy, if nothing else, the fact that you know, you're a future reference, are you getting a puppy that has some type of, of the common diseases that you're gonna find in the men pens? Um, so make sure all those genetic tests are done ahead of time, make sure all the blood tests are done with that, and they kinda of give you that whole health complete picture before you bring them home. Now definitely you'll probably read a, a lot about this breeder online hopefully beforehand either through like some type of AKC website or another uh, kennel club or they have their own website uh, maybe through Facebook there's you know countless ways you're hopefully going to read about them but just talk to them and kind of find out their breeding experience um, any good breeder is going to be happy to tell you and excited to tell you kind of their history you know obviously most breeders had that dog originally and decided that they wanted to breed them at some point um, so kind of find out you know how long they've been doing this and then another key you know trick that you can kind of get the the puppy mills especially is how many you know how often do you do this and guess what the answer is not very often because most breeders it's going to be two maybe three times a year tops it's how long often they're going to breed their dogs at least you know a single dog so if they're saying multiple times a year and like you know very excited about how many they push through or it is a good sign that you're running into a, some type of puppy mill operation and you want to get out of there quick so ask them you know how long they've been doing this and ask them more in-depth questions lay them in pin knowledge on them or ask them those deep hard questions and make sure that they can answer them and that they get the right answer because they should have done this for a while and they should know all the, the questions about the characteristics, about the health issues, about the coloring, about the temperaments, all those things that you know we talk about on this channel. They should be able to answer those types of questions. How can you be contacted after I pick up the puppy? So that is a key question you need to ask because any reputable breeder, once that puppy leaves their home, they always are gonna have some type of connection to them. So the good breeder is gonna to want to know, at least for a little while, that they're doing okay. And so they wanna, if they are not open to be contacted, then that is a bad sign. So make sure that you ask them that. Say, how can I get a hold of you? You know, after we um, have the puppy home. And hopefully most of them are gonna say, hey, yeah, please give me a call anytime if you have any questions about them. And what you really wanna see is that, you know, six weeks later, a month later, after you pick up the uh, puppy, that you're getting an email or you're getting a phone call asking for an update on them. And another key thing is any reputable breeder is going to want to take the dog back if for some reason, you know, it just doesn't work. So if they don't offer that type of, hey, we'll take that dog back anytime if there's an issue or not even if there's an issue, if just the fact that you don't can't maybe take care of them, then they're going to, if they don't take them back, then that's also a bad sign because like I said, these are their dogs first and they want to make sure that they're in the best home and they're put in the best situation. So always ask that question that, hey, how can I contact you afterwards? And so the last question that you should always ask or 
if it's not the last question, it should be throughout, is what questions do the, you have for me? And any breeder, like I said throughout this whole thing, they're gonna be just as interested in putting that puppy in, into a good home as you are to selecting from a good breeder to bring to your home. So if they don't have their own questions, and almost, you know, a little interview of you doesn't happen, then that's not a good sign that you're working with a reputable breeder either. So they may have a list of questions and they may run through them, but if it's one question or especially no questions, and once again, trying to push you out the door, then that's not a good sign because they may actually ask some good questions or give you some good information that you didn't know ahead of time. So make sure at the end of it all, if they haven't already asked you a slew of questions throughout, that you ask that question right there. Do you have any questions or recommendations even for me? So picking from a reputable breeder and asking the right questions is just one of the steps you need to take before you select your next men pen. So we did a video right over here where we talked about the differences between the male and female miniature pincher. So go watch that video next to find out which one is right for you.